It's good to be back and uh, hope to build on the first presentation uh, that brought us sort of to today to talk about GRC of tomorrow. So we are in a past where there's a lot of what I had referenced as a Winchester mystery house, this little chaos of different departments doing different things in different ways without a defined strategy, where risk is really being managed as in silos, but not only that, is really focused on the hazard and harm and not how risk can be leveraged for the organization as well. Too often, risk is disconnected from performance, strategy, and, and objective management. And that's going to change as we start to architect and build to the future. The physicist Friedrich Copper stated, the more we study the major problems of our time, the more we come to realize that they cannot be understood in isolation. They are systemic problems, which means that they are interconnected and inter interdependent. The physicist here is talking about biological ecosystems at this time when he made the statement, but he might as well have been talking about risk in the modern organization. Just tweaking this a little bit, the, mo the more we study the major risks of our time, the more we come to realize that they cannot be understood in isolation. They are systemic risks, which means that they're interconnected and interdependent. In my opening keynote, I mentioned, you know, the Titanic scenario. I mentioned COVID-19. These are examples of interconnected risks. You can't point to one risk exposure and say that's what did it. It was a multiplicity of risk factors that contributed to those. And today's modern organization is very chaotic and complex and dynamic. And we need to be able to see these complex risk relationships. We also need to understand risk in a different context. And we need to look at risk in the context of performance, strategy, and objective management. We take risks to achieve things. I mean, even coming here today, you know, each of us, are, we're, we're all natural risk managers. Even, you know, the child, the, the little child, as they learn not to touch the hot stove and things, we have senses and stuff to help us manage risk. Every individual is a built-in risk manager. And, and in that context, you decided today that it was worth the risk of a potential accident out there or who knows what else could happen, you know, to come here to this event. Obviously, it was a very low risk exposure and it wasn't a hard risk decision. We probably unconsciously made that decision, but we're constantly managing risks around our environment. Now, this is all built in. Now, let's look at success requires risk taking Oh, but risk must be managed to deliver on it. Teddy Roosevelt, he was a U.S. president from over 100 years ago. He stated, risk is like fire. If controlled, it will help you. If uncontrolled, it will rise up and destroy you. Risk managed properly can be a tool to the organization. We want the right risk. We want to avoid the wrong risk exposure. Uh, and, and somebody else from U.S. history, a naval hero called John Paul Jones from 250 years ago when the, when the U.S. was uh, fighting for its independence. Uh, he, he is known for the famous saying, I have not yet begun to fight and turn around and won a major naval victory. Uh, but he also stated, it is a law of nature, inflexible and inexorable that those who do not risk do not win. We actually have to take risk in, in, in life, in the case of John Paul Jones and in, in, in military, but uh, also in the case of business. We have to take risk. If we don't have risk, you know, we're probably out of business at that point. Uh, and so we need to be able to take risks. You know, it is a law of nature, inflexible and inexorable that those who do not risk do not win. Going to South Africa, Judge Mervyn Keene. He's the author, well, the impetus of the Keene 1, 2, 3, and now Keene 4 reports on corporate governance. Judge Mervyn Keene stated, enterprise is the undertaking of risk for reward. Now, to translate that a little bit, business take risks to make money. Enterprise is the undertaking of risk for reward. Businesses take risks to make money. Risk is a tool if done properly. Here's some key questions and themes to think about. Let's go through these together. Does your organization have enough information to make decisions about the future of the company when you don't have a clear view of risk that impacts critical business operations, processes, objectives, and strategy of the organization? Does your organization know its risk exposure at the enterprise, business process, 
asset and technology levels and how they interrelate and how they depend upon each other. How does your organization know it is managing and mitigating risk effectively in the context of the business to achieve business goals, objectives, performance? Can the organization accurately gauge the impact on risk on business strategy, objectives, and operations? Does your organization get the information it needs to take timely action to risk exposure to avoid or mitigate loss in situations of noncompliance? Like that one company I talked about that was spending 200 hours to build a risk report on risk events to the board of directors to find out they had risk issues that started 11 months ago. That's not timely. Timely is real-time information. Does the organization monitor key risk indicators across key objectives, systems, processes, and information? And does the organization measure and model risk in a business context? Let's remember the OSEG definition for GRC that I went through in the earlier presentation. GRC is a capability that enables an organization to reliably achieve objectives. That's the governance. It could be entity, division, department, process, project, or even asset level objectives. And in that context, address uncertainty, which is risk management and active integrity. So to do this, organizations need to deliver a top-down approach. One of the things that frustrates me in this space is when organizations like an insurance company called me in. They said, we just bought GRC. Now come and tell us how to do GRC. It's like, what? That's putting the cart before the horse. There's technology for GRC or GPRC, like our host today, Corporator, there's technology for it. But at the end of the day, things like governance, performance, risk, and compliance, these are things that the organization does. It's not something they buy. These are activities of the organization. Every one of you in here, your organizations are doing GRC today. I don't care if you call it GRC, ERM, ORM, IRM, ABC, XYZ, whatever acronym you want to use, you probably don't even have a name for it. I don't think there's one organization here that says, we can care less about governance, we don't manage our risks, and we just ignore laws and regulations and things. No, every one of your organizations is doing something related to GRC today, whether you call it GRC or not. The question is, how can it mature? How can it be more efficient, effective, and agile in your organization? This requires that we have a top-down strategy for GRC. And there's not just um, one department, but there's multiple departments that participate in this. And from building that strategy in the different departments that work on GRC, from, uh, from uh, senior executives down into risk and compliance and ethics and IT security and audit and environmental and health and safety and quality and, and finance. I mean, internal control functions. You know, you get them on the strategy. And then what are some of the processes we can define? How do we identify risk? Do we have a, a risk register or some place where we catalog our risks? How do we map those to objectives? How do we go about assessing risk? Do different departments and functions use different methodologies like bow tie risk analysis, Monte Carlo analysis? Um, or what, what, do we use heat maps? What, what, what do we do? Um, what, what is that process for assessing, reporting, monitoring risk? What's our internal control processes? What's our policy management processes? What's our third party vendor supplier risk processes? You know, what's our investigations, incident case management processes? There's a whole collection of processes that, that we can learn more about in the GRC capability model from OSEG uh, that help define and build a GRC program. And these, this strategy and the processes are enabled through an effective and efficient information and technology architecture. Now, let, let's unpack that. To be able to deliver on this, we need a lot of really solid information coming in. We need contextual information in the external environment, shifts in industry practices and laws and regulations, enforcement actions, being able to monitor the, the geopolitical and economic risks out there, uh, shifts in societal environmental standards, shifts in technology and what's happening out there with technology. We need to monitor the external context of the organization. We also have to monitor the internal context. What is our acceptable and unacceptable levels of risk? And what we define as our risk appetite and risk tolerance levels. What's our overall governance tone and culture of the organization? <clears throat> What's the, the strategic and operating plans and objectives and performance of the organization? How is that evolving over time and what risk does that bring in? 
What's our overall culture, as I mentioned, or controls? We need contextual information from both the external and internal environment and to be able to funnel that into our mission, vision, values to align with the organization. How do we measure this in this context? How does it implement, uh, how does it impact our strategy, our processes, and our roles? As we aim to achieve what OSEG, the Open Compliance and Ethics Group, the, associ- the profit, nonprofit association that has the GRC capability model, what they call principal performance. We all want to be high performing organizations. <clears throat> There's not one person in this room that I think, I really want to like hurt my organization. I really want to like lock it up and keep it from performing. You know, r- too often risk management is in compliance and control functions are seen in the negative. But the reality is, is we want to have high performing organizations. But we want to do it in a way where the organization stays out of trouble. You know, high performing cars. There's a lot of great cars here in Dubai, right? <laughs> and really fast cars. And you can go and, 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 and drive them and race them. You know, a high performing car doesn't just have a great engine. It's got good brakes and steering and handling as well. And you need to be able to keep it on the road. If you're flying down the road with a great engine, but you have poor steering and handling, you're going to end up with an accident. The same thing with good GRC is we want high-performing organizations. We want the organization to stay on the road and not fly off the road. And that's what our job is in governance, risk, and compliance type roles is to help the organization be high-performing, but also stay on the road. So in that context, we have our principal performance, we understand our risks, and we identify policies and controls to address those risks. It means we have to have an information architecture that can take in a lot of contextual information, distributed and disconnected data points from across the organization, being able to integrate and map these together and analyze and understand complex relationships and build out action items. Now, the challenge with GRC, as uh, uh, the way I see most organizations implemented, it's not GRC. It doesn't live up to the definition that GRC is a capability to reliably achieve objectives, address uncertainty, and act with integrity. Too often, it's backwards. It's CRG, or maybe the G on objectives is completely missing. It's CR, or maybe it's just C. That's backwards. We need to start with the objectives. Risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. You have to have context. Those objectives can be mapped to the organizational structure, whether they're entity, department, division, process, project objectives. Those objectives, regulations might help guide how we define our objectives. Objectives get established in policies. Our policies help us reliably achieve objectives. Can you imagine an organization that doesn't have any policies? Our accounting processes would be a mess. You know, our transactions would be everywhere, fraud and bribery and corruption. I mean, we, we, uh, information security, privacy, you know, uh, human rights, all these things are defined in policies. And without policies, the organization can wander in every direction. Policy says this is what the expected behavior of individuals, expected behavior of processes, expected behavior of transactions. Why? So we can reliably achieve objectives. In fact, um, some organizations I've worked with, like Starbucks and Suncor Energies and and the uh, petroleum company in Canada, they call their policy management program their governance documents program because they understand that policies help them reliably achieve objectives, their governance documents. You know, our objectives get down to roles. Who's, Who's the owner of that objective? How are they measuring the KPIs and corresponding KRIs to that? What are the issues, incidents, cases, investigation, risk events that can hinder those objectives? What are the controls in place so we can reliably achieve objectives that map back to policies? And the risks, of course. What's the risk to achieving those objectives? Now, I just showed you a many to many, a many relationship around this wheel from the objective point of view, but it's really a many, many to relationship across this whole thing. We need a good, solid information architecture to deliver this. When you're doing something like this in a lot of manual processes through documents, spreadsheets, and emails, you don't get real-time information. It takes 200 hours because all those risk assessments, they're done in documents, spreadsheets, and emails. And controls are managed in documents, spreadsheets, and emails. And cases and investigations are managed in homegrown databases or siloed solutions and things. And it takes a lot of time to get visibility. And all of a sudden, you had risk issues that started 11 months ago you weren't aware of. 
when you have a solid information technology architecture that maps all this stuff, particularly in the context of, of, of objective strategy and performance, you get real-time visibility into your risk that enables what we were talking about earlier, agility and resilience. So when it comes to technology, I've defined five generations of GRC technology, now defining the sixth generation. Back on that cold, snowy day in February 2002, in the Chicago office of Forrester Research, I defined the GRC market for GRC technology. Now, I had a very broad view of that technology back in 2002 and what it should do. But back in 2002, a couple other high-profile things happened. Enron and WorldCom. Uh, for you millennials and Gen Zs out there that don't know your accounting history, that's what led to Sarbanes-Oxley. And so we had Sarbanes-Oxley compliance. And for the first several years of GRC technology, it was focused on internal controls over financial reporting and the U.S. Sarbanes-Oxley law and regulation. But then things started to change, and my vision for GRC started to get implemented, what we called enterprise GRC, GRC 2.0. And that was enabling these back office, second and third line functions of risk, compliance, audit, and security to be able to manage and work together. And we try to like look at what is that solid core GRC platform that can do everything. But you know what? We came to realize there's not one platform that can do everything. There can be a core platform that connects everything, but there's a lot of specialty systems. There's specialty systems that just do commodity risk management like managing oil prices and things like that, and fluctuations and forecasting. There's highly specialized risk applications out there. There's highly specialized IT risk applications to manage vulnerabilities and threats uh, in, in your environment. There's a lot of information and content databases, and we need to be able to connect all this. And so we had GRC architecture. But then came the day that a lot of these legacy GRC platforms, people woke up and said, these are way too costly. Like one firm I've interacted here in the Middle East, you know, they spent three years trying to implement one major player out there, one of the major brands in GRC. Uh, it took them three years and now going, looking at things a different way and, and looking for alternatives. Uh, there's a LinkedIn post for one of these legacy GRC platforms out there that likened their implementation of this GRC software to the lyrics of the song, Hotel California. If you're not familiar with that song, you're stuck and cannot get out is what it's about. Uh, that, and, and the LinkedIn post stated that after $500,000 in software license, $2 million in implementation fees, two years later, they're getting some basic functionality working. You know, that's not agile. That's very, very costly. And a lot of these solutions are being implemented and they had so much customization happening to them that they broke on upgrades and you're stuck on that version. So then entered this era about 2017 of what we call agile GRC, GRC 4.0, you know, low code, no code, cloud friendly solutions. Some solutions have been there a long time before this, like Corporator uh, and others, but this is where this became mainstream. And building on that foundation of agile GRC, we now are in this era of cognitive GRC. How do we leverage artificial intelligence technologies such as natural language processing, ro robotic process automation, machine learning, predictive analytics to further provide value here? Uh, and now we're starting to build towards this future what I see as GRC 6.0, business integrated GRC, where GRC is actually part of business management platforms and systems and not all these additional band-aid layers of software on it, that we have this integrated platform to manage the business and manage risk compliance and controls all together in one. Again, I'm pointing this out to 2025 as when this becomes more mainstream, but there's software and organizations using it in this context already today as with corporators' clients. Because Corporator is one of the star examples of this idea of business integrated GRC, GRC 6.0, which we're starting to move towards and becomes more mainstream over the next couple of years. Now, agile technology for GRC is highly usable, not just for back office subject matter experts on risk and compliance, but the front office risk owners and risk takers of the organization has a lower total cost of ownership, highly configurable and adaptable without coding that breaks things. You know, it can be scalable and integrate into the environment. Good GRC done properly helps the organization achieve its business objectives. 
ensure risk-aware setting of objectives and strategic planning, enhance the organizational culture, increases stakeholder confidence, prepares and protects the organization while preventing, detecting, reducing adversity and weakness, motivates and inspires desired conduct, helps you stay ahead of the game, that agility idea, improve responsiveness and efficiency, and optimizes economic value. This value, when I work on business cases to help people build a business case for change for strategy, process, and technology, can be measured around three areas. Efficiency, effectiveness, and agility. Efficiency is time saved, money saved. Before, like that one bank, it took us, uh, take, it took 80% of our staff time. You maybe you have 10 people on your staff, 20, 30. 80% of their staff time was nothing more than document chasers and managers, not risk managers. And they can flip that around and maybe cut some FTEs or, or not have to cut FTEs, but don't need to hire more FTEs as they grow. What's that efficiency message? Before it took us 200 hours to build that report. Now it takes us five minutes. What's the effectiveness? Less lean slipping through cracks, more assessments getting done, more real-time monitoring and enforcement, that effectiveness. And what's the agility to help us keep up with change? Here's my GRC maturity model, the five stages, the ad hoc to the agile. Ad hoc is that stage of we're doing GRC when somebody's screaming at us. You know, when there's an auditor, a regulator that says, you need to do this, and then we go and do it, they look away, we go to do something else. The fragmented is we're doing GRC, like that one company that spent 200 hours building that report, but it's encumbered by documents, spreadsheets, and emails, and slow manual processes that we never get real-time visibility into risk in our environment. That defined is a mature department level, where IT security is brilliantly like using you know, technology and automating processes and has good visibility into risks, but other departments aren't the same way. In fact, you can have different departments at different levels of maturity, one, two, and three. Level four, that integrated, is where we have an integrated view of risk across the organization to be able to manage risk in that context across different departments and functions. But it's being done more in that hazard and harm view of risk, and it's not really aligned with strategy, performance, and objectives. That agile maturity stage is the stage where we align governance, risk, and compliance with the objectives, strategy, and performance of the organization. So getting there, my five-step plan for everybody on improving your GRC strategy. First, careful planning is critical. It's critical to understand where are you at today? What's your current state? Something is being done in some context of GRC in every one of your organizations. What are you doing today? And where do you want to be tomorrow? Six months, one year out. And what's your roadmap to get there? The next one is making sure that you have the right people on board. You have the right team members, the right departments and functions. You're working together. The next one is, is that you want to make sure you have the right technology foundation f- to deliver on your future state. You don't want to start with a solution to find out that, oh, it can only deliver this far and not get us to this level of what we're trying to achieve. You want to make sure you're building on the right foundation. But then you also want to make sure that you break things up into achievable stages. You don't just run up Mount Everest. If you run, climb Mount Everest too quickly, you actually die. Your body has to acclimate to certain altitudes before it's ready to get to the next altitude. And you need that time of rest, recovery, and adjustment. The same thing here in a a big GRC project is you want to break things down into achievable stages. But they also need to be prepared for change. You know, there's going to be changes. New laws and regulations, geopolitical risk events, economic conditions... But uh, it it, it could be a merger and acquisition. There's so many themes. You need to be prepared for change. 